So in this video I'll be showing you how to make a poison ring similar to this one. So this ring uses a lot of techniques that I've made videos for in the past, and I'm not going to re-explain all of them, so if you need any info on any of these, feel free to check out the link in the description to a playlist of all my videos. So the first thing you're going to need is a stone. I'm going to be using this piece of abalone, and I'm going to base the entire piece off of this. I also have no pre-done design for this, so we're going to see what happens and just kind of design as we go. So I'm going to use my stone as a template so I can make a backplate for the bezel that is going to be at the top of the ring to hold the stone in place. Next I'm going to use some dividers to add a border around the piece because I need it to be a little bit bigger so it can cover up the bottom compartment. And so it'll have somewhere to hide the hinge and the latch mechanisms. And the reason why I'm using the dividers, I can trace the line that I drew of the stone and make the same distance line away from it. So kind of like a offset border. And then I'll just finish up the lines with a ruler. So with that done, I'm going to use my jeweler saw and cut all the lines out. For my particular piece, I'm going to be making a rectangle, so I'm going to try to make them as straight as I possibly can, and then clean them up with a file once I'm done. With that done, we need a bezel now. So we, to make that, I'm going to be using some silver crown gallery wire, and just kind of wrap it around my stone to get the same shape, and then cut it to size. So after cutting it, I'm going to line up the bezel to make sure that it's completely flat on the bottom and everything lines up perfectly and then I'm going to solder it all together using some hard solder. So to solder this, I'm just going to hold it with a third hand, apply some flux to the solder joint area, and place a little piece of hard silver solder onto the joint, and carefully heat this without melting it, because you can melt this really easily. So once it's done soldering, I'm going to quench it in some water, and then I'm going to test fit it onto my stone to make sure that it's going to fit. If it doesn't, I will need to either remake this piece, or I will need to shorten it up because it's too big. For the bottom of the bezel, I'm going to want it to be as flat as possible, so I'm going to use a flat hard surface like my anvil, and some 220 grit sandpaper. This will just make sure that the piece is completely flush with the bottom plate, and we won't have any holes when we solder it down. So for my back plate, I'm going to flux the entire thing and then move it over to my heating area. I'm also going to be heating it from underneath it so I don't have any chances of melting any of the gallery wire. So after fluxing the gallery wire, I place it into the center of this back plate and add four pieces of medium silver solder to each side of the rectangle to make sure that my solder will flow all the way around. When soldering things like this, make sure that you're always moving your torch around because you can melt your piece very easily. And you just want to keep going until you see the solder flow and work its way around the entire piece. And then put it into a pickling solution so you can get it all cleaned up. So as I'm waiting for that to clean up, I'm going to cut out the outside of the container area of the ring from this sheet of silver. And this is about 0.6 millimeters thick. So before we can actually form this into the shape I need, I need to anneal it to soften the metal. So I'm going to do that by heating it up with my torch, and then I'm going to have to pickle this afterwards. So now the first piece is completely clean, and I can test fit our stone to make sure that everything still fits after soldering it. And when you do this, make sure to put down some string or some dental floss under your stone in case it gets stuck. That way you have some way of pulling it out. And everything looked good, so I'm going to move on to the next part, which is shaping our container bezel around our stone, and using it as reference, because I want everything to be about the same size. And because this is a container or a structural part, I can't really use bezel wire for this. So I'm going to have to use pliers to shape this exactly how I want it, because it won't just curve around the stone nicely.
So once I have it to my liking, I'm going to use my jeweler saw to cut between where I'm going to be soldering it to make sure that both ends meet up as close as possible with no gaps. And then I'm going to do the same thing I did with the bezel, which is add a piece of hard solder to it and some flux and solder it together. So here's our container piece all cleaned up. So as you can see, the top of this is a little rough and needs to be ground down so it'll be flush with everything. And I'll need to do the same thing on the other side just to make sure everything's going to line up perfectly. But let's put both of these together right now just to mock up what this is going to look like. So all in all it's not too bad, but I really don't like the shape of the bottom piece and I'm going to try to square it up a lot more to make it a lot more even and just better looking. And there we go, and it's a lot more straight and more our actual rectangle now. So it looks like all it needs is the top and bottom to be ground down so they can be meet flush with everything. And we can do this by using the same 220 grit sandpaper. Now with that done I can flux both pieces that I'm going to be soldering together and get them soldered together. I'll be using medium solder with these by the way. So with all that soldered together, I'm going to use my jeweler saw to cut the extra material off of this and use some files to clean it all up and make it all flush as possible. So now I need to make the hinge. I'm going to be using this piece of what I thought was silver tubing, but it's actually brass tubing with silver coating on it. I ordered the wrong thing, but I'm going to make it work. So I'm going to measure it up on my container piece and then cut that piece off using a jeweler saw. So with the top and bottom together you can see how this is going to sit and now I need to solder this on to my container piece. So now that I have that on there I need to cut out the center of it so I can turn this into a working hinge. So I'm going to file down the inside of this so the new piece that I put inside of here won't come into contact and won't bind up. So with my calipers I'm going to measure the inside of this and then cut a smaller piece of tube than what would fit inside of here so it has a little bit of play. So all I have to do now is mark where this needs to go on the top piece, solder it to it, and we have a full working hinge. So like I say all the time, be very careful when soldering stuff because you can ruin pieces like I just did and have to remake them just by overheating them a bit. So how I'm going to solder this piece on is adding a small bit of solder to the back and then putting the tube onto it. So finally I can test fit it all by putting a small piece of wire through everything and making sure it all works. And now I can mark the other side for the other tube that needs to go on here for the latch. Along with marking where the stud is going to go to hold the latch in place. So once I have that I'll cut my tube to length and solder it on. So now that I have that all together I'm going to test fit the bottom and it's a little too snug so I'm going to file down the back of the newest tube that I put onto it. So on the bottom container I'm going to drill a hole into it using a ball burr because it happens to be the exact size I need for the wire that I'm going to be putting in here so our latch can actually latch shut. Be careful when drilling or using the ball burrs and your placement of your fingers because I actually go through this and go into the tip of my finger. So just keep in mind that you can actually drill into your own fingers if you're not careful. But anyways, now that we have the hole, I'm going to place my wire inside of it and solder it in place. So I'm going to cut down the excess wire and leave about 5 or 8 millimeters. And then I'm going to temporarily put the two pieces together using some thin wire through the hinge point. So I can make a clasp that will go over our little anchoring point on the front. So to make the front clasp, all I'm going to do is take a piece of wire and put it through the tube on the front and then wrap it around the little post on the bottom and then cut it and solder it together so it's one piece. 
So how the clasp works is basically it goes over the little post on the bottom that has a slight bend to it and it should stay in place until you force it open. So that way when you're moving around, it doesn't just open up on you. So I'm going to stamp the inside of this with a 925 stamp, just so people know that the majority of this whole thing is sterling silver. So the last thing I need to make is the ring part. And I'll just be using two pieces of half round silver wire and turn them into rings and connect them together so we have a dual banded ring. And because these are curved and I want to solder a flat surface to them, I'm going to flatten the tops of them so I can solder everything as strong as possible. So now all I have to do is solder the ring to the bottom part of the poison ring. So after pickling everything and cleaning everything up, it's finally time to start assembling it. So to keep all the hinge parts together, I'm just going to use one piece of silver wire and melt one end of it to turn it into a ball, and then put it through all the tubes and then melt the other end into a ball so it won't come out. So here it is all put together. Now all I need to do is go over it with some sanding discs to clean up any rough edges and smooth things out. And then I'm going to dip it in some liver of sulfur, just for a couple seconds, and then neutralize it in a bath of water and baking soda to give it a kind of colorful uh, tarnish. And there we go. It has a bunch of different colors all over this now, and it's time to set our stone. I try to set my stones after I put my pieces into liver of sulfur, or any chemicals really because a lot of stones react with them. Or in this instance, it's not a stone, it's a shell. So you can ruin shells or any type of uh, pearl with acids. So there we go, it's all set. You could keep it like this and clear coat the entire thing, or you can do what I'm gonna do and polish certain parts of this up. So here it is after all the polishing and sealing it with a strong lacquer. So as you can see, it can hold a substance inside of it and you can easily pour it out. Overall, I like the build of this and how the thing looks and how the abalone looks on top of this with the colorful tarnish I did. So thank you for watching my video and if you liked it feel free to leave a thumbs up. If you have any questions or suggestions leave a comment below. And if you would like to be updated every time I post a new video, subscribe to my channel. I try to put out a new video every week. Well, thank you for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.